Hey, my name is Anthony O'Connell. I'm a man with a high voice and a podcast. We do a feast or pass, rate it one to feast, great dining experiences, and more. Today I talk with Chimdi Chekwa of The Pit Barbecue Grill. We talk about The Pit making a spicy barbecue sauce, his celebratory meal after being drafted in the NFL, teamwork playing at Ohio State and how that translates to the restaurant business, a $12,000 NFL rookie dinner, and finally, why you should eat at The Pit, Brussels sprouts, feast or pass. I'm going to say pass, but I've had I've had some good Brussels sprouts. My wife, she does a good job of making them taste better than what I've, I've, I was used to growing up. So. So I'm I'm gonna say pass though. My my initial <laughs> inkling is to say pass. So I'm gonna go with it. That's fair. I mean, I, I feel like I only like Brussels sprouts when they have bacon. I feel like anything with bacon is a win for me. Um so bacon, Brussels sprouts, I'll do it. Otherwise, probably not. What about something a little fancier, maybe like a like a caviar? Pass on caviar. It's not it's just not my thing. I liked it the first time I had it, and then I did some research into it, and like I knew it was fish eggs going into it. But when I saw the fish eggs actually come out of the fish, it really grossed me out. And so now I'm a pass. I'm a pass on caviar because uh, the process is gross. And I feel like this should be a funny one for you. The McDonald's McRib. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a pass. There yeah. was a time. There was a time when, when it was feast, but it's a hard pass for me at this this point in time in my life. Yeah, I feel like you're a barbecue expert. You can't really have a, a McDonald's fast food <laughs> Uh, barbecue. So now we're going to move on to one to feast. It's kind of like a one to five scale, but we say uh, feast instead of five for branding for fun. Taco Bell, one to feast. One. one. one? I do not. I do not eat Taco Bell. What is it? We're in 2020. Probably yeah. 12 years ago, I ate a lot of Taco Bell. Fast forward 12 years later, I won't even look at the the, the sign. <laughs> I, won't even, I won't even watch the commercials. <laughs> is it are you about like a are you would you say you're like a health nut? Are you against all fast food? I am not against all fast food, although I am trending towards no fast food. I'm trending in that direction. I say mainly because I've eaten a lot of it in my past and there's not a fast food restaurant that I haven't eaten a lot of that, you know, I'm not kind of sick of at this point. I've eaten I worked at McDonald's for my first job. So I stopped eating McDonald's and I started eating a bunch of Wendy's. I'm done with Wendy's at this point. I don't know. It's just not, it, to me, it's not, fast food isn't as good as it used to be to me. Although I have recently discovered Arby's <laughs> and I do like Arby's at the time. So we'll see. Those little mozzarella sticks, nothing wrong with that. Or the curly fries dipped in cheddar, nothing wrong with that. My, my beef, no pun intended, my beef with uh, Taco Bell is their, their meat quality. I don't, I feel like the quality of their meat is not very good that's just my personal opinion so no i i think it's i think that's an objective fact i heard <laughs> that they have the lowest grade food that can still be for human consumption now i didn't yeah. fact check it i just saw it on reddit and i was like okay that's a fact but it seems <laughs> believable <laughs> it's definitely believable I, I would agree with that just based off of my experience so when it comes to um chicken wings let's go dry rub first uh one to feast on a dry rub chicken wing Dry with feast. Feast, yeah, that's delicious. Yeah. Now, what about a sauce, boss? Would you say sauce, like a saucy wing, is also a five? Saucy wing, a okay. saucy wing is also a five. See, I'm a barbecue sauce kind of guy, so I guess it depends on the sauce for me. I'm not a big, not a big buffalo, buffalo wing eater at all. Do you have a preference of drums or flats? They they both have their benefits, and they both have <laughs> they both have their their positives and negatives for me. So no, I don't have a preference. I, it just depends on how I'm feeling, I guess. Fair enough, man. Some people are like weirdly passionate about it. Like when I post on my page Upper Feast, like some people have really strong feelings about only drums, only flats. Another thing too that's really polarizing is uh, ranch dressing. I personally love it. What do you say for ranch dressing? One to feast. Ranch dressing is a feast for me. I definitely like ranch dressing. Ranch is barbecue sauce and then it's ranch for me. One, two. And I could put them on almost anything. I agree with that. I, I love barbecue on mac and cheese. Now at the pit, your guys' barbecue is delicious. I wish you had a spicy barbecue sauce too. How do you feel about a barbecue, like a spicy barbecue? Are you into that at all? So we've we, we've discussed it time and time again, whether or not we should add a, a spicy uh, barbecue sauce. I do like a, a spicy barbecue sauce. And a lot of people do. So stay tuned. It may happen. Nice. So I have an unpopular food opinion when it comes to barbecue. I love potato chips and I love barbecue, but I hate barbecue chips. Do you think that's weird? I do think that's a little bit weird. Now, I don't know. 
it's not exactly a one to one comparison, barbecue chips and barbecue, but I am a fan of barbecue chips. So when you were drafted to the NFL, because you you're a former NFL player, did you treat yourself to a special meal? Like how did you celebrate food wise? So what kind of happened with me is Hey, just wanted to say thank you so much for listening so far. If you're liking it, please subscribe, tell a friend. If you're loving it, please give us a five star review. Um, I watched the draft one day. I thought I was gonna get drafted one day. It didn't happen. The next day the draft came on, I went to my sister's graduation and we went out to eat after the graduation, actually. So it was like the graduation, post-graduation like dinner. And that's when I got the call that I was being drafted to the to the um, Oakland Raiders. So after that, I think I forgot everything. So I don't even remember where, where we were at, what I was eating. I'm not sure. I don't even know if it was good or not. So do you think it was because you were just like so excited and so blown away? Like you couldn't like it was just like a, almost like a dream state. Yeah. So it was two two feelings. So first I was so nervous and, you know, because the draft, you really don't have any control over who or w- w- when you get drafted. So I was nervous going, you know, that day. And then, you know, after getting drafted, now I'm just excited. Right. You know, so, yeah, I don't remember much outside of my sister graduating and me getting, getting a call saying I was drafted. Now, do you remember, were you a little bit grumpy at your sister's hang? Because I feel like if I were in your shoes, I would be feeling a little salty. Like I was expecting to be drafted and then I wasn't. And then I got to go to a family function. And of course, like I'm a big family guy. I love my sister, whatever. But I, it would be hard for me not to be feeling a little grumpy. Well, we had planned to go to the graduation that day. The ex- expectation was that I would get drafted the day before. Um, the, the graduation was kind of a way for me to take my mind off of it. Although it didn't help. I still kept <laughs> thinking about it. So, you know, I was excited for her, but I also was trying to not think about, not stress over it. That makes sense. And when you were in the league, you were kind of everywhere. You were in Oakland, New England, Miami. So you probably know a lot about food, I'm guessing. Which city is the best out of all the cities that you played for? Which city has the best food scene? Oh, city has the best food scene. I would have to say Miami did. So that's a tough question. So I, I was in Oakland, but I was, you know, in the Bay Area. So I had access to the, the Bay Area, which has an amazing, amazing food scene. But I just feel like in Miami, I, I got out a little bit more, maybe, or I just accessed more um, places um, than, than the Bay. So if I, was to, if I was to guess, I would say the Bay has a better food scene. And I'm going to add Napa to that discussion because it's like a hour and a half drive from where I was living. So between those, you know, that whole area, I think they have the better food scene. But I would say I experienced more when I was in Miami. You know, I was kind of living a life a little bit in my in Miami, I guess. That's so cool, man. That's incredible. So I just think it's really cool that you were teammates with at, at Ohio State uh, at such a high level working together and being on a team at that crazy extreme level. And then now you guys have a restaurant together. Do you feel like you learned skills playing football that translated to your restaurant business? Yeah, I think I do. I think probably the biggest is just discipline. Um, The understanding that you can't control everything. So control what you can control. And then probably the biggest thing is, so in football is really competitive for you to be able to you know, achieve your goals or whatever and, you know, play, start, maybe make it to the next level. You have to continue to compete and continue to improve because everybody else is competing and improving. Um, so I think that that element is probably probably the biggest mindset that, you know, even going into the restaurant, understanding that we need to continue to improve for us to be successful. So people giving feedback, customers having negative experiences, we have to be able to take that criticism, which you know, similar to football, you take criticism from your coaches on a day, daily basis so that you um, can continue to, to, to improve. So that's probably the biggest the biggest thing. Yeah, that's, that's really great. Do you guys ever butt heads? And if so, how do you deal with like conflict resolution? Because there's four total co-owners, correct? Yes. So that's got to be kind of challenging if, if one of you feels some certain type of way. Like, do you have a story where you overcame some adversity and, and got, got through it? It is challenging. You know, I will say, I don't have a specific story, but I would say we've had our moments of disagreement, passionate disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine disagreeing on barbecue menu items and stuff. And I think, I think for us, the benefit for us is that we're kind of we're close and we're kind of like family. So we understand that even with disagreement, we won't have a rift that you know continues to keep us apart because ultimately we are like family. So we kind of work our way ourselves through it, try to give everybody a voice and get everybody's input and try to make a decision. 
based on majority rules, really. So, I mean, that's kind of, you also kind of want to give people leadership in certain areas so that there's not always, a, uh, you know, a disagreement that keeps us from moving forward. It's four people, right? Everybody can't be the king of everything. Right. Um, otherwise, there's, it's going to be hard to continue to progress. So, yeah, we're, I mean, we'll start acting, something that we'll start active, actively working through is definitely a challenge, but, you know, we've been able to, you know, so far, you know, do a good job addressing it and, you know, moving forward. Now, what made you want to start a barbecue restaurant? Was it your idea originally? Was it one of your friends? Like, was it kind of like a collective idea? As I remember it, I think it was somewhat collective. I mean, we went into it initially wanting to do a, a restaurant that, you know, fit kind of what we liked. We, we were trying to do a franchise. The franchise thing didn't really work. We couldn't really find the right fit there. And then we started just thinking and... I think I probably brought up the idea or, or, or one of my points. I can't really remember, but thinking that, you know, barbecue is something that we feel, um, you know, being here in Columbus, going to school here, that we feel like there was a need for. So we went from there. We started trying places. They took me, you know, I'm, three of my partners are from Cleveland. You know, I'm from the South, grew up in Louisiana, uh, moved to Florida. But they took me around the Cleveland barbecue scene, which I enjoy, which gave me a little bit more energy of wanting to, you know, move forward with the idea. So. I mean, that was our approach. You know, we, we had that vision of, you know, do it, doing how we want to do it, but also incorporating that Cleveland uh, style barbecue that they experienced growing up. That's fun. I feel like one of my favorite things about your, your place is you can tell that you guys really care. Like you genuinely care. Like your fries are cut in house, like hand cut fries and the mac and cheese is ridiculously good. I've only been to the Parsons location, but the customer service has always been super amazing. Like you guys are just crushing it. So I'm really, really thankful that you were uh, willing to have Thanks. this chat today. So at your restaurant, you guys have amazing food, incredible service, and that's a great dining experience. I like your vibes and ambiance too. I, I like that exposed brick and all that. Um, but when you are the customer yourself, what do you think makes a great dining experience? I think it's a combination of the senses, man. So the the look, the feel, you know, um, the welcoming atmosphere or non-welcoming atmosphere, whatever you're into. <laughs> Uh, when you when you first get there, but I also think if you if you even step back a little bit, I think some of the you know engagement prior to even entering the restaurant adds to the experience, right? So, you know, if a friend just talked about how great this restaurant is and all that stuff, it already elevates your um, expectations, and you want to like you know you want to experience whatever they they experience. So, you know, if somebody already comes out and tells you, like, that place is no good, it's terrible. When you go there, you're already looking at what's wrong, you know? Right. So so it starts before you even get there, maybe even on social media posts and whatever connection you feel to the, the business and what they're doing in the community. All, all, all those things are part of the experience in there. And then from there, um, obviously the customer service and then the food, the way it looks. And then and, and what how, how it tastes and the texture and those things. Yeah, we definitely eat with our eyes. That's that is a fact. If it looks good and I feel like this is such a weird thing, but even if like different plates matter, like if you're served something on a paper plate is a totally different vibe than like a fancy glass plate or like fine china or whatever. It all makes a difference. It's really it's really weird how you eat with your eyes, but I'm with you. Aesthetics are very important. So do you have any like really fun stories of um Maybe like going out to eat with some some NFL players or maybe some Buckeye players back in your in your sport days. One thing in the, in the NFL world is um, there's this a uh, rookie rookie dinner, and typically, based on your position group, you have the guy who was recently drafted um, take everybody out to eat, um, and that price tag typically you know that dealing with guys who get paid a a lot of money to play football they tend to um splurge and stuff when they go to restaurants even when somebody else is paying for them. so i guess my my inch, most interesting story would be um, when i had to pay me and my other guy who got who was a rookie we had to pay for our whole position groups food that uh, i think it was ruth chris we went to oh man and the bill wasn't that that bad considering the fact that we had just got drafted and paid and stuff um initially and then they started ordering shots of uh Louis. Oh God. Those, those were like 100 and 150 a shot, and they started to add up, and that tab got up to about 12,000. Oh my gosh. And then, and then there was a, we had a. I'll, I'll just say this: it, it didn't it didn't go over well with the two with me and the other guy. We weren't we weren't we weren't as open to paying the tab as they had expected. 
So, I mean, ultimately there was some this there was some disagreement and you know, one of the, the veteran guys um put some money down on that. So yeah. Is it so. is it kind of like a like a maybe like a low key hazing kind of situation? Cause I would think that the veteran should buy you guys dinner because you're the newbies. No, so it's a it's a hazing thing. So that's like across the league is there's a few things that always happen, like you carry the veterans like um equipment and stuff around. Um, there's always like this, this one rookie dinner. Sometime at some point in the season, it's going to be a rookie dinner. Some, some guys are more, some guys don't try to, you know, kill your pockets and other guys are just, you know. So was that uh, the 12 K was that just for like five or six people or was it like 10 or 12? Like how many people are we talking? Yeah. So probably about 10 plus. So 10 guys within the position group. And then, you have to add their wives, girlfriends. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, we had like a some guys on the team who were not in our position kind of sneak into the dinner a little bit and we said we're not paying for your tab. It was yeah. It it wasn't as many people as you would expect to to get that type of tab, but it was definitely a good amount. Yeah, man. I I used to be a server in New York City. I actually I started my, my food account in, in Manhattan. And I have an unpopular opinion, even as a server, I feel like if someone buys a thousand dollar bottle of wine, for example, I don't expect them to tip 20%. I feel like it's not really fair. Like I don't expect a $200 tip. So I hope you didn't tip 20% on all that liquor because they literally just poured it into a little shot. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're doing some crazy thing and I'm not against tipping. I love tipping. I'm a, I'm a good tipper, but I feel like when it comes to booze, I can be a, not stingy necessarily, but I feel like there's a limit. Yeah, I always struggle with tipping because it's a per, it's percent of what you spend. It's almost like you know I'm I'm spending more, so now I'm actually tipping more. So I, I'm just continuing to add to my. So it almost, it's almost like incentivizing you not to spend as much. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, total spend. Uh, yeah, so it's a weird thing. When I was in London, you know, we played a game in London. Uh, they don't do tips, and I tried tipping, and they were like, "No, there's no tips here." I was like. Okay. I think <laughs> I think it should be like that. Now, if tips were not a thing, I could not have afforded to live in Manhattan because like I don't have wealthy parents or anything. Uh I was a server at a very busy restaurant. And if I was being paid like 15 or 20 an hour, there's no way I could have lived in Manhattan. So I'm thankful for tips. That being said, I think maybe we should get rid of them. And just the restaurants should pay the people. Yeah, it should pay them. It should definitely pay them. <laughs> um I was going to ask you next what your worst dining experience would be, but I feel like spending 12 grand might be up there. So how about the different question? What do you, do you have a best dining experience that you can think of maybe with your wife or just with some friends or like, you know, anything. My best dining experience. Let me think. I had a few. So, so speaking of this, the, the San Francisco Bay area restaurant scene, um, I can't remember the restaurant, but uh, the owner, brought me one of these uh leave one of these wagyu uh steaks um and he and it came with a birth certificate so <laughs> I, I to this day have a birth certificate of the steak i ate in san francisco and this I, I don't know why the, the name of the restaurant is is uh is not coming to my mind but um yeah so i know i know the life that the, that this uh this <laughs> cow uh lived so Better life than a lot of people, probably. Um, <laughs> I went to a restaurant uh, in Manhattan and they gave me, I ordered some fish and they gave me a little ticket thing similar to what you're talking about, but it had the fisherman's name on it, what time he caught it, where he caught it. I'm like, why do I need this information? Like, it's kind of cool, but also it's like, do I need this? Do they just make this up? Does this guy even exist? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They just made up this story. I, I, they probably just made up that birth certificate too with it. It added to the experience, you know. Now I That's feel true. like, I feel like, you know, this is some high quality. I mean, also that that was an expensive, expensive steak too. That I got comped. Nice. So there were some perks. There were some perks to playing. You know, I had to pay that high bill, but I also got comped. You know, meals that would probably cost two hundred, two hundred dollars or so. That's so fun, man. So how did you? Was it hard for you to go from? 
getting free meals and and hanging out doing football sorry i, I don't really watch sports so I, I don't know the verbiage that well i like i'm not one of those people who's like ooh sports ball but like i just don't really watch it i'm more of like i'll go to a like a sports bar and like eat snacks and drink or whatever but anyways i digress was it hard for you to go from nfl to going to school and getting your mba was it hard yes it was hard because first of all it's, it's hard for me to sit in the classroom you know, when you're when you're actively every day moving, running, doing, I mean, you you spend time in meetings and stuff, but this is just a different, it's a more collaborative environment than sitting down listening to a teacher tell you a bunch of stuff. And, you know, so um, and it was a it was a um accelerated type process too. So I had, you know, class every day, including like on Saturdays. Um, and it was from like early in the morning until you know the after late in the afternoon so it was it was a crash course it was it was tough it was definitely tough well it seems like you're you're a pretty intense guy i mean if you're able to play in the nfl and able to do the nba like that's pretty elite great stuff dude that's i'm genuinely impressed that's awesome thanks man appreciate it of course so do you ever do you ever cook at home i always like to ask people some fun cooking stories or the opposite end like horrible cooking stories yeah, I, I cook from time to time. Sometimes, my wife does most of the cooking at home, though. Nice. Do you do you stick with barbecue at the house, or do you try to mix it up because you have barbecue for your job? No, um, I will say, you know, most of what I do is grilling. So if we, you know, we have some wings, or my wife will prep it prep it for me, and then I'll just you know do do, some, do a lot of the grilling. Um, but not really, not really barbecue. Um, we, I mean, I we eat everything, really. That's cool. Yeah, I, I try to cook. I'm decent at it. Uh, if you ever see any of my cooking videos on Upper Feast, um, you know, it's fine. I just do, like, really simple stuff, like, you know, lasagna, mac and cheese, whatever, stuff like that. See, like, I can't eat mac and cheese because I'm automatically comparing it to the pit. So it's, it's always, like, it's hard when it comes to barbecue or some of the stuff we offer because it's, like, you know, if my wife cooks mac and cheese, I'm going to be like, why did, you know, <laughs> why did you make it like, why didn't you just use the pit recipe? Or, you know, why didn't we just go to the pit and grab, grab a large mac and cheese? <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. When did you guys open the pit? So we opened September of 2016. Um, so a little bit over. Just over four, four years. Yeah, a little bit over four years ago. Um, and I was still playing at the time. So I was in Miami. Um, playing with the Dolphins when we open. That's cool, man. Let's see if I got any more questions for you here. Do you have any unpopular food opinions? I talked about mine earlier with the the barbecue chips. Do you have any unpopular food opinions? Uh, unpopular food food opinions. Um, I don't like blue cheese. I don't know if that's an unpopular food opinion, but I'm not a fan of blue cheese at all. Fair enough. Uh, Oh, the other thing, the other thing is, so like when we talked about fast food restaurants, so one way, so logo colors can determine whether or not I like a fast food restaurant. So the reason I haven't been to Arby's pretty much my whole life is because I never really was attracted to the look. So it's just a weird thing, but I recognize that that makes a difference. Like there's a, there's a restaurant in a uh, fast food restaurant in Texas called like Whataburger. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of it. I would never step foot in that restaurant because I do not like the logo or the color. I just it's like if y'all couldn't pick better colors and logo, then you're not getting my business. <laughs> Dude, that makes sense. Because it's like if this is what you're showing the world to draw people in, this is the best you got to get me in there. Hard pass. No, thank you. I get it. <laughs> exactly. Uh speaking of burger chains, in and out, I don't like it. I think it's overrated. Have you had in and out? And what are your thoughts? I like in and out So I lived in the Bay for five years, and I like in and out in and out is weird to me. So if I'm really, really hungry, in and out uh, in and out burgers taste so good to me, so good. After I eat one, maybe one and a half, and I'm not as hungry, the taste of the in and out, in -and -out burger drops considerably. So it's one of those weird things. It's not like I, I won't stuff my face with in and out. So if I'm hungry and be like, oh, so good, I'm just gonna keep eating it. But when I'm really hungry, it's for some reason it hits the spot. So I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. 
<laughs> if you do want to splurge and overeat and have some fun, what's your go-to like fast food or fast casual or even restaurant? Like if you're really wanting to just go nuts, what place would you go to? Uh, I would go to the pit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, second to pit, I will say, where, where would I just go eat up a bunch of food? So I'm, I'm a big fan of Chinese food, right? But I'm, I'm going to put Chinese to the side and come up with something else. So Piata is one I like a lot. Um, Piata is a place where I, I feel like I can always go to Piata and eat, you know, one of those, um, I guess, Piatas or whatever. Like a pasta burrito? You do the pasta in the burrito? You ever do that? I do the pasta in the burrito. And I like the burrito. So a lot of people get a bowl when they go to Piata. I will advise them to get get the burrito. There's something about that burrito that they season it in a way yep. that it tastes really good. It doesn't taste like a Chipotle burrito. It's it's, it's really good. I are, do you like Chipotle? Are you a fan of Chipotle? I'm not a fan of Chipotle, and I got this weird relationship with Chipotle where I can eat it and I can enjoy it, but I would never say I really like Chipotle. It's kind of like it's one of those things. I don't know. It's like I could. It doesn't taste bad. It tastes good, but I never, I never like to have that. I never say I, I never crave Chipotle. So that makes sense. Know. I. I feel like it's kind of fallen off. Like, I don't know if I've just eaten at so many restaurants now where the quality is different or if Chipotle's actually changed, but I feel like five or six years ago, I was obsessed with Chipotle. I loved it. Now I'm like, it's fine. It's, it gets the job done. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What would you say your elevator pitch is uh, for the pit? So for the pit, I would say, you know, we are, we are, you know, a group of four guys who started this restaurant trying to be a staple um, here in the Columbus community. Um, we put a lot of effort into our our food is and especially our sides as opposed to just our meat so we obviously put a lot of effort into our our meat but um our sides we feel are, are also equally as important and we feel a lot of restaurants don't you know take that type of effort because it's a cost issue but you know a lot of ingredients um everything coming in made like like it's made at the, at the house you know, our um, our recipes are recipes that we developed from, you know, a long line of grandmothers <laughs> and mothers um, um, across our, you know, four families. So we just put a lot of time and effort in. And you know, my business partner always says our stuff is made with love. So, you know, when you got grandma's recipe, it's not just, it's not just, you know, something that's, that's just created. It's, it's something that, you know, um, comes with you know a little bit more effort than just your typical restaurant so yeah man I, I invite everybody to come down to the pit try our food I mean we have some unique things with like the um, Polish boy which is a kind of a Cleveland a Cleveland thing that we brought here to Columbus and we have turkey ribs which you know, is a little different not necessarily actually ribs but is a, a, a great tender meat but our, you know our our, um, our brisket our our ribs our rib tips, uh, are really good, really, really good flavor. And our food has a really good flavor profile across it. Of course. And I agree with you that a lot of um, barbecue places specifically will master the meat and then kind of just skip out on the sides. But your sides are super good. And uh, I 100% recommend the pit. If you're in Columbus, definitely come here. And actually one time I posted you guys, I posted your mac and cheese and did a little versus versus a couple other mac and cheese spots. And there was the vast majority of people supported you. It was like 85 comments pro the pit. So the upper feasters love you guys. That's the I'll, I'll put our mac and cheese up against anybody, anybody, <laughs> anybody on the, anybody you watch on the food channel, I'll put it up against them. Uh, but yeah, um, I appreciate you, you know, having me on, man. This was fun. Of course. Um, so I, I asked you everything I had to ask, but if there's anything else you got to say, say it. If not, you know, we can get out of here and go on with our day. I mean, in terms of the pit, we are, in the process of getting this Clintonville location open, you know, we've, we've had some challenges with, you know, COVID and then inspections because everything's kind of delayed this, you know, nowadays. And then we also are expanding to um, Bridgeport. Bridgeport has their uh, North Market, similar to North Market uh, downtown. Dude, that's Bridgeport. huge. Congrats. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we are, we are planning to open up and, you know, we still got to deal with this, different environment of getting things uh, ramped up, but I'm um, planning to open up probably um, mid-January or even um, early February to 
uh, get that rolling out there in Bridgeport Market. So the, the pit is, is moving and growing. And um, we just, I mean, we appreciate things like this to just continue to spread our message. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man.